to Boom 7 Meet the Owner. Um, we were going to have a guest. Hello, Chris. We were going to have a guest, but um, they're busy in their business. So I think the first uh, podcast we're going to do, Chris, is Talking to me. More, talk to you. You're a business owner. You've yep. had a few in the past. In fact, you've got more than one. So why not start with um, having a chat with you? So you're obviously in radio. You've yep. got a DJ business. How did you get into music? That's a very good question. And well, I'm very happy to be on your first podcast, Steve. Cheers. So thank well, you very much for inviting me. I don't know. I've been doing, doing music for a long time. I think I got into radio, first of all, through... Um, when I was at school, I ran away to sea. That was probably <laughs> the beginning. <laughs> so okay. there, there used to be a, a, a boat off the, the coast of Kent called Radio Caroline. Okay. And when I was doing my A-levels, I decided to <laughs> ring them up, tell them I was an expert, and they, they got me on board without realising I was 15, I think, at the time. And, and I think the blagging, the, the, I think you have got this mentality that you can talk very well. So did you... Have you always had that where you, you kind of can just talk your way into things and out? Yeah, I think that was probably part of the problem. So <laughs> my mum had to come into the school and say, oh, Christopher can't come into school today to do his A-level mocks because he's run away to sea. Wow. And yeah, so I became a bit notorious. But, but yeah, I was on the boat for three and a half weeks and not intending to, but the, yeah, yeah. the weather was quite quite stormy <laughs> and it was all very much unofficial. So it was quite hard to get people on and off the boat. So you had to wait for a shipping boat to come past and then kind of jump across a six foot gap onto the, the so fishing So you, you went AWOL? Or, well, or sort of uh, sort of organised AWOL? My parents thought I was going for a day trip, right, but okay. I had no intention of going, <laughs> coming back from the day trip. Wow. But I thought I'll just stay there for a, a week or two and I'd pack to... Yeah, you know, a few spare pairs of pants. Yeah, of course. But it was it was an amazing experience. And what, if you could look at the one thing you learned in that period, what was the sort of the tip that it comes to now? You've been doing it a long time now, but what did you learn that you'll always sort of bring bring to business in radio? Don't underestimate a fifteen year old. <laughs> I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a good point actually because you know we're sort of taught to go to school, do exams get a job, get a mortgage. But actually, even now, you know, I'm encouraging my children to look at business ideas, you know, whether it's a product or a service that you can offer or just think about it now. But that's kind of changed over the years, isn't it? It's quite cool now to be an entrepreneur. I think there's there's so much more that you gain in terms of life skills um, yeah. outside of academic work. And I would, I think not just when you're at school, but when you're at university or when you're, you know, starting out in life the yeah. stuff that you do outside of work is hugely important and that's where you get those life skills and you become when i'm looking for people to be on the radio station I'm looking yeah. for people who've got something to talk about yeah there's no point being an expert in radio if you you come on the microphone and you're the most dull boring person ever and you've, you've got you've got no life experience no so, and you know i don't want to give you a huge head um but I always big you up anyway. But um, I remember meeting you. I was a marketing manager of a restaurant in uh, Milton Keynes. And um, I do remember um, you was with the sales lady. And um, I said, oh, I need to get a voiceover. Do you, you know, is there anyone that could do the voiceover for our telephone system? So like a whole music. And you were like, oh, yeah, I'll do that. So I'm thinking, well, we'll, we'll book you in for a, a meeting. And <laughs> you went, no, no, go and get your phone. And you, I literally gave you the phone. You did one take. And our, our system was done. And I think from that day, we were friends, weren't we? <laughs> and it has just stayed on your, your telephone system for years. It's probably still <laughs> there. One, yeah. one take wonder. Well, one, one, one take Chris is what I called you. Um, and I, <laughs> I always remember because you were working for a local radio station at the time. And um, I think I came to you um, and said, I've got this great idea. I'm going to start the Food Awards in Milton Keynes. And you were like, I've actually got a great idea. I'm starting a radio station. And, and I remember you showing me the pack and... You become my host of the Food Wars there and then, and mm. you've always helped. I think you even built the website. Yeah. Do you remember building yeah. the first website? It was the Floating Waiter. It was an amazing website. <laughs> the, the website was great. I'm not sure the logo was great, but <laughs> it's just really interesting that you, you've always been really willing to help people. And I don't even know how, it must be 11, 12, 13 years maybe. Yeah. You know, you've always went out your way to try and help people. And I think... That's why you are successful anyway. I think that is, yeah, that is my, my secret to success is don't think, am I going to get anything out of helping this person before you decide whether you're going to do something nice for them? If yeah. you're just genuinely helpful, you don't know who that person might know or yeah. nothing might come of it. But the more positive 
things you put out there, more nice things you do, the more people will want to, you know, 100%. help you and recommend you. And you can you can be one of two kinds of people in the world, somebody that's nice and helpful or somebody yep. that everybody hates and they work with you because they have to because of what your oh, job is. That's not, not cool, because is it? they actually want to. Yeah, not cool. I remember... Ju- so you started that, that, that project and it went really well. Um, do you remember the first time you'd sold for your own business the first piece of advertising? Do you remember that? I'm still waiting for that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so that's, that's not good business. No, um, no yeah. yeah, it's a great feeling. Yeah. But, uh, but I think for me, it's it's difficult because it's quite a creative industry that yeah. I work in. And my job encompasses the artistic side as well as the commercial side. But, but so, go, touching on the commercial side, mm. you, you know, obviously you need to bring the pounds in to cover the, the cost and overheads. Yeah. But do you remember the first client that came through and did that feeling of getting them from a business point of view, help you get to the second one. Because once you've got two, you've got three, and then you get the next one, and then you can't, it's like a snowball, isn't it? And sometimes the first client's the hardest. You know, no one knew about that that station because it, it never existed. So, yeah, it's very, it's it's tough. And I think you're right, that there is like a snowball effect. But yeah. it's the most difficult thing is with a new business, trying to sell to people something that doesn't, exist in a tangible well, way well that's how i started the food awards yeah you know how can you sell a food awards if it doesn't exist you've almost got to sell the dream the actual idea of what it's going to be and that's probably the same for what you did with your project yeah exactly so it's a lot it's very it's like being bob geldoff you've got to go in there and bang the table and, and get people excited and yeah. say this is gonna be this is gonna be brilliant you need to be in there from the start and it's what gets people excited about the project is you're selling yourself more than the business I yes. think, to start with and it's your passion that comes across and people people buy what you're selling because they trust you and they like you and they I, th- I think trust is huge you know do I trust this person are they going to be professional is the price right and are they going to deliver and I think if you can round that off mm. you've got a good chance of doing business with people it's funny how you mentioned the Bob Gelders thing because again when I started the Milton Keynes Food Awards I used that analogy. It, I, it was a restaurant. We went to review them. I re- uh, reviewed the restaurant. Went to um, go and review another restaurant. They were like, why should I give you free food when I can give 10% off to my customer? And I was like, that's kind of short thinking. It was what I was thinking. Yeah. So I went to the next restaurant who was friends with this with this restaurant owner. No problems. Come in. You can have the food. Just shout about us. Give us your honest opinion. Take some photographs. Do a nice write-up. And we'll see where it goes. So I had that. So... That was almost like your your Phil Collins, right? So I had the first <laughs> act in the food um, reviewing um, business that we had. So I went back to the friend and I said, "Oh, we've we've just um, done a review for your friend's restaurant. Do you do you want to review now? Oh yeah, yeah. like if he's got it, we, we're going to get involved." And suddenly Bono's on board, and Bono's in. <laughs> you know, Bono's coming with his shades and he's ready to go. Now what you've got is you've got two really good restaurants that are in the food wars that doesn't exist. Mm so much easier and actually what you're trying to do is give value to the restaurants you want the public to find out where it's good to eat because we're very well we're both like that trying to eat in independent places Mm. as opposed to the chains and then it's like a snowball effect and it's probably the same with your model when you started your business yeah absolutely and i think the thing with me is i don't feel like i'm a salesperson no i feel like i'm forming partnerships with local businesses and helping each other kind of 100%. thing so finding out what what their issues are what they need help with and yeah. saying okay how can we use the radio station to solve this yeah obviously it's going to cost a bit of money if you do some of these things yeah. but we're not just going to do the stuff that you're paying for we're going to go over and above yeah. and if it means doing interviews in the studio or right. outside broadcasts or podcasts or whatever whatever it does to help yeah we'll do that but obviously I, I, I we're see that yeah. I, I remember you being and it must have been a friday saturday sunday every week you were always at an event you had your t-shirts you had your mascot you had your vehicle you had your flags and you really grafted and you know from an outside point of view just getting to know you you were dedicated all the time like you were pushing to push out a brand and that is probably part of your success now because you you are a grafter you know you built my website like you hosted my awards i feel like i should say some nice things about you at this no, point no, this is good. And i think you i think you left a nice linkedin for me once so it's about six years Did ago I? yeah i think you're the only one but this is cold um but it's true and i think you know you when you're doing business with people 
I think you do need to like them. If you don't like someone, you're not going to do business. Yeah. So it's that part is very black and white. And then it's about the service, isn't it? Um, but you're also a DJ at, at weddings. So that's yeah, another business. Yeah, we should business. definitely mention that. So that actually 100%. is my bread and butter at the moment. Yes. So if anyone's getting married, I do high-end... <laughs> you plug in. Wedding you plug in services. Business. Yeah. Well, I'm explaining what my business yeah, is. Yeah, of course, yeah. Um, so what I noticed was a gap in the market because people... Anybody can be a, D- a DJ. Anybody can yeah. buy the kit, rock up, plug it in and, yeah. and do the job. But I think when you're getting married, you want a certain level of service. Of so it's not just about you know, having the best sound system or the flashiest disco lights. It's about caring about the couple, spending time getting to know them, understanding what music they want at the wedding, and then delivering an amazing service that exceeds their expectations. So 100%. they leave a good review. So I've got 100% five-star reviews for what, my what, 100%? wedding discos. 100%. Crazy good. And that's, people say, well, you shouldn't have 100 You should have a couple of bad ones so it looks genuine. Why? Because no one will believe it. But yeah. I think when you can see that they're actual couples, yes. especially Facebook reviews, because you can click through and say, oh, is this a real person? Oh, yeah, there she is in her wedding dress. That's yeah, clearly... Yeah. You know, either I've got hundreds of friends willing to lie for me, or I've <laughs> yeah, I've got a lot of friends. Reviews. Yeah, so, maybe you know. get them all dressed up in wedding dresses. Yeah. Um. So that was the start, and then I I kind of responded to my customers because yes. people were saying, "Well, I really like what you do, but we're getting married in a barn, and it's quite rustic, and we need something that looks a bit less pristine polished, and yeah. polished." So I've come up with the rustic wedding discos, which is a a wooden disco setup that Lovely. you can decorate according to what your wedding look is so you might want little flowers or fairy lights or whatever and it, it looks beautiful but it's a completely different vibe that kind of fits with how people are so so, so here's a question so you, through my business I mean, we've got um, a, a client who we're helping them build a wedding venue um, they were open years ago successful shut down didn't do anything massive refurbishment um, and we're helping them bring in a catering team to 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 hit a standard we'll do some um, open days where you've got djs flowers um, and all the services and cakes um but if someone's getting into weddings and i'm going to ask that question as a wedding mm. question so whether they're a videographer whether they're a dj whether they're a cake maker whether they provide the the sachets on the back of the chairs what are the three things you would do now i know that hitched is an amazing website yeah. that really gets you a lot of leads so if you think that's one, tell me that. But what are the three things you would say in terms of wedding service? If you work in that that industry, yeah. what would you tell the listeners to sort of focus on? Obviously, you're going to do quality service, and you know it's, it's you, you've got to do a good job. But to market your business, mm. what would you do if you start? I I went to a lot of wedding shows. Did you? Because I felt like the the best way for me to stand out from all of the other disco businesses that you find on a google search or on hitched or wherever is to meet people face to face and be able to tell them what the difference is because for some reason when you say it to somebody's face it's a lot more authentic than when you write down we are different we are better we are award-winning whatever especially with robots now so with ai you can get your robot to tell you to say that and actually it hasn't got that meaning has it it's just Mm. words coming on a bit of paper so one you say Get face to face at wedding shows. Yeah, wedding shows are important, but make sure that your stand represents what you do. Make sure you in, you invest time, not necessarily money, but time in making it look beautiful. So okay. that might mean having a little bowl of sweets on your stand. <laughs> but sweets, think right? about what sweets. What sweets? So I, yeah. I had um, nice kind of purple wrapped up chocolates that looked posh because okay. it's for weddings. Yeah, I don't didn't want a you know bowl of miniature heroes because <laughs> okay. it's not. You know, it's not a business expo. Um, so you, what you're saying is invest in a little bit of quality because actually they're, they're sort of, the audience are there, aren't they? They're, they, they're getting married. They, they're in yeah. a buying mood at some point. You need to capture that, right? Your job is to convince them and to stand out against other people that are doing the same business at the wedding show. So photographers, there's going to be a dozen different photographers and a lot of them offer almost exactly the same service. So what makes you different? There's going to be loads of people that do the flowers or the, the chair decorations yeah i noticed that the other disco companies at the wedding shows all had very similar booths okay. so i'm the only one that has the the rustic wooden setup so and made people, stand out yeah it? people gravitate towards it because they think oh actually yeah that fits with what i'm doing for my wedding a lot of them have given up with discos because they think i don't want a spaceship in the corner of my, my beautiful <laughs> wedding that yeah. looks completely out of place and some you know 
scruffy DJ that's more interested in the buffet than actually playing the music that I you want. You see that, don't you? I mean, you, when you see a DJ eating before the guests, you just think, what are you doing? You're There's sneaking just, in there. I can write a whole list of things that DJs do wrong that I wouldn't <laughs> want you? at my wedding. This is, a, this is another show, I think, Chris. Well, it's, it's about turning up with your own idea of what you're going to play. Yeah. And instead of making it about the couple, making it about yourself. And it's the same in all sales. Yes. It's like, do you think about your business or their business first? And it should always be about your customer. It's the customer, isn't it? And yeah. they're the recommendation, aren't they? They're the person that's going to do the next gig and it'd be their friends, their family that are going to recommend that. Yeah. But what's the third thing you do in the wedding? Not just DJing, but if you're getting into weddings and you've got a service, what's the third thing to stand out and actually achieve some business? I think you've got to make sure that, well, this is the double thing, but you've okay. got to make sure that your online presence is up to scratch because that's your shop front. That's yeah. how people are judging you these days. It doesn't matter how much you're you're putting into google adwords yeah. or um adverts in magazines and stuff if people land on your website and your social media and it's not a good representation of your business then that's how they're going to form an impression of course and, and they'll either make an inquiry or not depending on what they what they see there so spend the time get your website done professionally yes because you can make your own website but it's going to look rubbish yeah at the end of the day and also get some professional help with your social media because they're going to scroll back through your Facebook and they're going to they're going to look at what posts have been, have been on there and and stuff and it's not you're not doing your own social media you're you're presenting your business and 100%. there's and yeah talk to someone like Steve because oh you, you know, plugged me like this is a great thing you've done so I plugged you and you're plugging me so I didn't know you were allowed to do that on radio but that's cool we can um, do that it's all about front doors for me I use the analogy right if your front door looks battered and unpainted and your flowers aren't there actually my flowers look terrible at the moment um well, and you see my front door it doesn't even open it, inwards does it not <laughs> um, I have been, I've been in that door um it's your front door and pe people just flick through social at the moment we'll, we'll talk more social than web but um if it doesn't look even at five out of ten they're gonna pass on and go to the next one the next one if you've got a heavy competition they're going to make that decision they're probably going to talk to three to five different types of companies within that field so whether it's photography whether it's a dj whether it's flowers cakes um and then by the time they get to you it's all about the communication it's about being professional it's about showing what you've done before this is what we do um and i think it's, it's being mindful of that isn't it you can't just wait for business so what would you say your top three tips for having a great online presence on your socials? So I think consistency. Um, you know, if I think about the different businesses I've had over the years, if if you had 10,000 flyers, for example, and they were under your desk, it doesn't matter how good that flyer looks. They need to be through the doors, in the offices, being given out through magazines, through the newspapers, if you're going to do that. But in the same terms of being digital you just got to be regular and also tell people what you actually do some people don't tell it the comp like the people what mm. you actually do so do you do websites do you do logos do you do events do you do animation tell people that they don't want to see that on every post they want to know that person so second one put personality into it it's probably a reason why i'm doing a podcast get get mm. to know me a little bit and i want to know lots of other people and you know i hear opportunities where i can help someone and i think that's like paying it forward isn't it if i can get someone a business opportunity they're gonna do really well and it's, it moves on to the next part and then the third part in terms of digital is i think it's a mixture of something that looks clean and designed something that is a little bit rustic and live and video it needs to move as well and just mix it up if you've got static images all the way through and it's the same sort of message people get bored video is so powerful isn't it but it's quite difficult to get video content that looks decent without spending some money yeah and i think there's a thin line i think you can have something that's rustic but more powerful than something that's super clean because you got to remember when you invest in a, a, a videographer for a day and a day editing that day has got a bring back quite a lot of money in terms of sales or opportunities for it to pay for itself. The one thing is, like um, at weddings, once you've got a video, it's there forever. Yeah. You know, you can chop that video up, you can overlay it with different animations and, and almost target different parts of your business by using the same video. So don't just use it as a one piece. So if you had a video for your DJ and don't just have a minute and a half, chop it up and you might have 15 different posts that you can use throughout the months. Um, but consistency, don't get forgotten. Um, you know, LinkedIn for me, once or twice a week. Um, 
it's about being heard it's about opinions it's about some visual stuff it's about success stories i always find that if i talk about, about how i've helped a client that's big in them mm. they might win some business i don't think you can lose whether you get one like or you get 100 likes I'm shouting about my client and if someone needs, for example, you know, I've got a finance client, I've got a restaurant client, I've got um I've got someone that does conservatories. If they get one sale, that's just one post. So, you know, always try and sort of big up your clients. I think it's a really nice tip. Do you think it's a very British thing to British. be reluctant not to blow your own trumpet? And I think a lot of people find it difficult on social media to talk about themselves and big themselves up because they I say it just doesn't come naturally to you to be to be saying those sort of things. I th I think yes, a little bit of a British thing. I always see myself as Scottish, so you know we're we're, <laughs> we're a different breed anyway. But um, I don't think there's anything wrong about saying that you've got results for your client. You know that's great. That's good news. Um, and even I seen a, a post on LinkedIn a few few months ago, and someone had done an exam, and they failed the exam, and generally you don't see the failures don't hear about it mm. and i bumped into the guy at a networking event and i said oh you know fair play that you've said that you have not passed your exams i said do you think that was the right move or not the right move he went do you know what the amount of people that came to me and said look keep going and the inspiration he got um to continue to try and get that is brave and i think that's the right thing to do just just but was that an exam that was critical to his business competence it, it was actually so mm. that's why it was so sort of black and white in terms of is that the right thing to do or actually do you know what if we're going to do p business with people we want to do business with people we, we like and that are honest but he's mm. now passed so it's all good he may, he may have had a bad day um and the pass marks are different for every exam so um, so having said that do yeah. you think maybe sharing an occasional challenge that you've had to overcome as well as a whole list of successes because in anyone's business there's yeah. gonna be things that go wrong is it yeah. good to kind of say, you know, things don't always go perfectly. We had a video shoot at such and such a client and it was a disaster, but look how we've turned it around, something like that. I, I think you can put a nice spin on anything. And actually, you know, I'm reading Arnold Schwarzenegger's uh, um, book at the moment um, and it's, it's inspirational. But when you look into it, it does talk about a lot of the things that didn't go well and you don't see Arnie as like a failure and he said that yeah. you know, like everyone in it could be, could be cliche like failures failures aren't failures they're only failures if you think that you've you failed it's just a learning tool for you to do better for the next one and to learn new lessons um, so I think you should be honest you know I've, I've had a great year last year for business didn't win every gig didn't retain every gig but I'm always learning, so that mm. always goes to the next client. You think differently. I like to be in different industries so you can see how different types of people in different jobs and businesses think and work differently. And that makes me more rounded. And it's got to be the why. Why do you do it as well? So, so what would you say has been the greatest challenge that you've overcome over the last couple of years? What's been the, the biggest kind of temporary setback that you've kind of felt oh my god how am I going to come back from this and then actually you've bounced back and it's ended up okay in the end as a business owner yeah um I think when you start you're starting from zero pounds okay so you, there is that worry can I do this mm. then you get your first gig your first project and you're like this is great then you get your second one then there might be some weeks or days where you're like, oh, where's the next one coming from? And I always say, because my background's marketing, keep marketing. You don't know who's seeing it. You don't know who's talking about you. Um, I'm very much, I know a lot of people, I just seem to talk to something that moves. If you move, I'm going to talk to you. If it's a tree or a human, <laughs> I'll talk. And because I like helping people, I suppose I was 44 last, week, uh, last month. So if you, if you add up the amount of people I've probably spoken to, um, and I've been in Milton Keynes for 40 years, you know, I'm I'm well connected in terms of knowing people because I'm in the business world more so now. I can connect people really easily and that gives me a, little, a bit, bit of a buffer. Mm. Whereas if I came to a new city, I'd have to start from scratch and I, I'd probably be worried more so about the next gig. But you've got to be positive. You know what the Henry Ford saying? You know whether you're you think you're right or wrong, you're you're, you're right because it's your attitude that's going to get you to the next place. Um, it's gone well. 
Like mm. I, I, I can't really think of many negative things. I think you're as good as what you put out. So if you're not making calls, if you're not sending emails, if you're not connecting on LinkedIn, if you're not posting on social or having coffees or going to networking, you're just like that leaflet. You're just sitting under yeah. the desk, i.e. you're at home, not talking to anyone. I do think the so pandemic think the, was a big thing, yeah. The challenge there is, for me, would be more time management because the, these are all things that you know you should be doing, working the socials, posting on LinkedIn, yes. going for coffees with people. But it's like there's not... And, because I've got kids now as well, it's finding enough hours in the day to do the day-to-day -day running of the business and all of the marketing stuff as well. It can be can be really difficult. I think putting the right people in the right job is really important. Obviously, you know, there's certain things that if you only took £500 a month and that was your ceiling, how could you afford help in terms of, you know, you might get an administrator for a couple of hours a week. You've got to look at your strengths, do more of your strengths. What's going to bring in the next project so you're almost sales and marketing in your own business if, if if it's you on your own or you've got a team you you know you have to choose to do that um and if accounts take a long time get someone to do the accounts because actually for, if they save you six hours a month you could be six hours selling the next project so i think you learn as you go and you know time spent on you know the more networking and the more i shout about an existing client or a piece of work more people come and talk to me so I know that works. So it's just that consistent getting the messages out there. I think it's about working out what are the things that you have to do yourself that are dependent on you so that your personality, so the networking and the stuff yes. that people are, people are buying you. And the things that you're doing that actually you could, you could outsource that or you could delegate 100%. it and get somebody else to do it to free your time up to be doing the stuff that is all about you. 100%. You know, we, we've all got our sort of, best skills so for you for example you're technical you can talk you can listen you can network you know you see you the problem I, stuff. the reason i don't do what i've just said that you should be yeah. doing is because <laughs> when i delegate me. stuff i feel like it's not done as well as it would be if i did it myself yeah and it's about letting go of your standards of quality and deciding to fight the right battles for me sometimes so rather than doing everything yourself and not delegating because you you want it to be done perfectly yeah. accepting that okay maybe there's going to be certain details that you notice that nobody else does that aren't perfect but how much better are you going to be how much more advertising you're going to sell yes. if you're out there focusing your time on doing that rather than tweaking the website or whatever but, but something has to give doesn't it and mm. you know you've got to first of all if you are running a business a business needs to take money and the business needs to make a profit so if you if you look at that rule as a thing you've got to do your sales and marketing as, as a priority because otherwise there is no business um, I suppose as you grow I think businesses need to reinvest so does that afford a staff member does that you know does that get you a salesperson does that get you someone more technical and kind of grow it from there but I always say to people when we're doing this show why do you do what you do and what is your why like if you was given 10 million pounds today right now mm. in this suitcase what would you do with it yeah there's no suitcase <laughs> what would you do with it? you got my hopes up there <laughs> yeah. um, it's just behind this tv yeah um 10 million pounds chris greg well done mate what are you gonna do the thing is my first thought is yeah. what radio stations can i buy oh and my how god can i do what i'm doing on a huge scale i wouldn't run off to a desert island and just sit around on a sun lounger because i would see that as like right amazing i can buy global radio now i can take over capital and heart and but, but but why would you do that because in essence if you're going to buy a business you're buying a business because you want the business to make money but you've already got the money so what you're saying is you want to stay in the creative world but you don't need to do that because i don't do this because of the money though that's the yeah. thing so i do this job because i enjoy it yeah. i could earn a lot more money doing something else yes but um but this is the thing you've got to decide are you is this a career or is this a hobby yeah and if it's a career or if it's a if it's a business it needs to be making money it needs to be 100%. profitable it needs to be growing and it needs to be scalable and it needs to be something that you know you can see an opportunity for ongoing growth so here's the game changer so you as a person without kids which i knew yeah <laughs> you knew my, my <laughs> former self and and i'm in your boat by the way um and you 
with two children, mm. married, it changes, right? It's yeah. a completely different world. And do you think that what you're doing now, do you think about, oh, do you know what? I, I want to be successful and earn money so that you can look after them more or pass something to them if, if they're great. Like, how do you see that? What's your sort of vision for that sort of stuff? Um, I'm more thinking, how can I make sure that I'm not crippled by childcare costs and I've got enough <laughs> money coming in to be paying and that. And that's the prison, right? That's where you're yeah. at. Yeah, okay. It's so expensive, especially when Super. they're under three. Yes. And the government changed the, the rules, but not it. until for children that hadn't yet been born at that point. So yeah. it doesn't help me at all. Oh, it just means my taxes are going to go up for, for other people's children <laughs> in the future. So yeah, no great, no great advantage there. But yeah, I think you, it puts things in perspective. It makes you think about more carefully about yes. what you're spending your money on. And do you do you want your children to go into radio or the arts or singing or music? My children appear on the radio quite a lot. Oh, do they? Because Brilliant. they're there in the background shouting at the screen while I'm trying to record a radio show. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, sure, sure. And you should just about kind of hear them in the background if you listen really carefully. Um, I have no idea what they want to do. I think the yeah. three-year-old wants to do anything involving tractors and... Okay. Uh, the one-year-old, anything involving diggers yeah. um, or oh, being... So you need to buy a farm. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, that would No, work. actually, the three-year-old said that he wanted to be a YouTube influencer. Interesting. Indirectly, he said he wanted to be Blippi. Oh, we, we know B-L-I-P-P-I. So, yeah, yeah, that's how you dude, spell his name. Dude, I Big shout But out. actually, to be fair, yeah. I've got a lot of respect for that guy. He's called St Stephen John. Yeah, and he's in the RAF, wasn't he? Yeah, and yeah. he basically reinvented children's entertainment on YouTube. Yes. And he just said, this is so awful the, was quality, the missing, quality of it? these videos that these kids are watching on youtube i want to do something something good quality yes. and he reinvested that money he, he worked really hard created a studio and then got bought out and he's part of disney now he's is he actually millions. part of disney oh i didn't yeah. know that so here's what quite interesting this week so three children henley is at his screens like yours every day um i'm going to be a youtuber and then you kind of pinch yourself okay whatever and then harper she likes dancing quite smart as well and you know she's a little bit younger and then hugo's like blippy like he's in that zone <laughs> um but harper's sister made him a, a youtube you know when you get a hundred thousand um subscribers you get that little plaque yeah so harper's made one out of cardboard and i thought oh you don't give it to him he'd be like oh what's that and he was like oh that's great so as a parent i was like aim for a hundred thousand subscribers just go for it because you just yeah. don't know. And, you know, I will bring him on the show to see the studios. I've already said that before Christmas. You didn't know that, but if I could do that, no, that'd be great. Is he making content then? Yeah, I mean, he's got 18 followers, <laughs> right? And he's doing a little bit. But that's, that's what he wants. He started. And do you know what? A lot of people don't start. And yeah. whether that is the reality that he will do something great like that um, and earn a living. How old is he? 10. So he could do a podcast. He could come in here he and do record a podcast. Well, there you go. Look, opportunities, right? You yeah. put it out there, it should come back. Um, but I think we're sort of moving away a little bit, but I don't think you can go to school and learn some great stuff. I think it's great. You, you get to learn about your personalities and maths and you've got to count and write and stuff. And, it, you know, that's kind of the, the basic stuff. But the kids don't just have to go to school to, to be a lawyer or a doctor they can start a business and they don't have to wait till they're 16 they could start something and you know my kids have now got these little bank accounts that are online or what well, my, i didn't have that when i was younger but you can teach them and i think the schools are now teaching them about money yeah and well-being and it's not all bad out there i think there's some good things that to happen through the, through schooling as well and you can do your own little business why not i think there's a lot of schools need to catch up on and a lot of online stuff like teaching children what's fake news and isn't. Yeah, of course. There's right. been a lot of stuff in the news about how more than 50% of under 16s can't identify fake news wow. on social media. That's crazy, isn't so it? It's, uh, the, schools, the schools haven't, the curriculum hasn't caught up with technology. No. And there's an awful lot of stuff to do with online safety and kind of social socializing and, and stuff that that just yeah, isn't getting taught 100 percent. Um, henley was on a vr headset the other day and you you, you talk to all these people and i was like that sounds like a robot being a kid like is that real that don't sound, it sounds too um too like a robot like yeah it you, sound can, like you can tell 100 percent. and you're like there is that safety piece and you know that is a little bit of a worry but you know they just said that you know gaming is taking over music and film in terms of numbers you know, the amount of people gaming and YouTubing. Mm. 
but you got to embrace it. You got to be part of it. It's scary, and then yeah. the whole like what we're used to of actually watching TV programs at a certain time Four and channels. they come on and <laughs> yeah. listening to the radio. It's just kids these days; they don't really understand that they want to be able to to watch a program when they want to watch it. Yeah, and even like my three year old just saying to him, "No, you can't watch Hey Dougie because it's not on at the moment," and he knows that he can if he, he can wants find to. it. He can yeah. find it. Um, but that's that's it. that's um, you know you've got to be flex. That's another like, a tip for for business. You know, if you look at the likes of Blockbuster. They could yeah. be the Netflix, and they they didn't evolve. And you do have to keep evolving what you're doing. You know, you you run a radio station. Now it's on screen. Then it's a podcast. Then you can put it on YouTube. You know, there's so much media now. You can't just do one. You've got to go with the times and sort of lead with it. Yeah, and this is what we found. Actually, we've done more business with people wanting podcasts than radio advertising. Oh wow! Because they see that as a it's a real better investment and you know you can see the return on the investment you can you can track how many people are watching the podcast and see who they are and stuff and big fat zero today well you <laughs> know but you might get might get a viewer no chris we're going for it. we're gonna have this this is great this is the start of boom seven meet the owner don't you worry about that but no podcasts are great because it's as you say it's a chance to showcase what you do to your potential customers for them to get to know you as a person 100 and yeah, you talk about elevator pitches, a minute or two minutes. When do you get a chance to have half an hour of somebody's attention and just, you know, properly get to know them? And that's what cements those those business relationships. And what we find yes. is doing an audio podcast that's also a video, yeah. like this one, that you can then take clips of and put on your socials. Amazing. You can have a clip on LinkedIn and yeah. you can have it on your website uh, that, that can then drive traffic through to the, the are podcast. Are you plugging again? This sounds like a plug. Sorry, everyone. This is like a little plug plug, but it's true though, isn't it? True. So true. true. I've, we've taken a selfie before the show and I'm going to put it on my LinkedIn and if one person likes it, cool. If, if no one likes it, cool. But I'm telling people that I want to meet businesses I want them to know about your station and your services. So why not tell people? Why not? And actually, what I would recommend is coming in here, recording <laughs> a podcast, and then talking to Boom7 about how to get it marketed and, and get it visible on all those social platforms. Wow. The best way to use those clips to, to get them monetized and actually drive drive traffic and drive customers through how to create a, a capture form and a, a kind of a have the podcast behind some kind of data capture so that you can yeah. find out who your your viewers are and then then get in touch with them there's so so many clever things you can and do. if you want to sponsor boom seven meet the owner <laughs> at revolution radio station get access to a dj then let us know because this will go somewhere and it's all about helping people paying it forward having some fun you know being topical you know what's going on out in the world so so what is this podcast going to be what what can people expect from this and what kind of people are you going to be meeting and who are you going to be talking to so i've got a big network um we're going to have joe from aqua parks which is like on a lake so if i think of a big bouncer castle on a lake i'm like how do you start that and i met him at a networking event years ago we've hosted stuff with him and really interested he's an electrician this is the thing. He's got a great story. Yes. It's not just about running an aqua park. No. It's how did he get to that point? What is his, what's his vision for the thing? Had, I mean, last time I spoke to him, he was going to buy a massive site on a lake in Essex somewhere. I don't know if he actually did that. He's he was close. He expand the brand around the close. country. And, you know, you don't mix electricity with water. He's an electrician. <laughs> He's got an aqua park. So that don't make sense. So how, you know... There's things like I know how he searched for that aqua park. So that, that intrigues me. That's what I want to tell everyone about and let him tell everyone. Um, I've got a um, a finance company that finance property development. So actually, how do you do that? Do you need a load of money to do that or can actually you borrow joint ventures? So that's going to be really interesting. Mm. I want to know as well, like what people do with their money. What's the why when they when they get paid? What are they doing with it? Are they helping people? Are they buying a bigger house? Are they going for a sports car? Are they? Do they just want to eat in nice restaurants? Do they or do they want to save money because that you know it, it's safe and it's all good? Um, and to let people learn from the people that have already done it and they're doing it. Um, you know, I know a company that have got twenty staff, and I know a company that have got no staff. They consult and they they make the same profit. So. Mm -hmm you know what is it all about do you need to be around people um it's gonna be fun um i'll ask some good questions 
you know like if they swear i don't know the rules but we'll beep that out but oh yeah, you're allowed swearing on podcasts are you so yeah. loads that's gonna be great <laughs> so i rang someone this morning who's got um he's got um uh, a marquee business around the uk and he started a, a business up for his son driving and delivering sports cars so marquees top end sports cars mm. I said, Paul, do you want to come on the show? No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm old and grumpy and I t- swear too much. Perfect. <laughs> I said, I'll get your son on, show you how good it is, and you come on and you will love it. And, you know, I'm going to connect him anyway. I've got a few people that are in the industry, and if they do business together, great. If they don't, great as well. But yeah. it's just fun. It's a game, isn't it? It's a buzz. And, you know, just get to know what these, these people do. But in different industries. So, you know, it won't just be finance. It won't just be restaurants. It won't just be... Um, leisure it could be law it could be all sorts just to get an insight of people that own a business what the positives are what the negatives are and you know what do they want to do with it yeah. and we get to learn as well it's like free learning brilliant brilliant it sounds good where, where can i be. listen to this podcast well we need to talk <laughs> after you already we are haven't, we haven't made that plan but <laughs> if you listen to this first one um you'll you'll see where we go and you know it's always going to improve it's, it's a chat but but basically, people if people know you or they want to get in touch and put themselves forward, this is a great way to showcase your your business, 100%. tell people your story, and you know find out a bit more about podcasts by being on one and yes. seeing if this is the sort of thing that that you fancy doing yourself. I think there's going to be spin off podcasts as people decide that they want to do it themselves. But but yeah, go for it. Sounds good. And um, you know, look, we'll big Chris up a bit more. If you do want to do a podcast as well, there's there's a couple of studios um in Northampton and Milton Keynes. Um and if you want to be on the show, um drop probably myself an email, Stephen at boom seven dot co dot UK. Um you know, we're 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 nowhere yet. Um but we've got the desire to try something new and we're gonna chat to a lot of people and, and make things happen. Very exciting. Exciting times. What a great start to 2024. Yeah, thank you.